guys can already see me on the TV two screen here. <laughs> um, we would like to get things started. And uh, I, I do apologize that we are running late. But as I express to others, when you try to involve culture into these type of events, you are very hard to be on time. Because I'm sorry, Creator was not on time when he did things. You know, so I apologize for this. And yes, we uh, are running on Indian time right now. <laughs> and Indian time is when it gets done, right? So again, I apologize. But we'd like to, to get started with the proceedings. So if everyone could come into the room. We're going to have grand entry. And just a little bit about grand entry. For those who have been at powwows, uh, you would see grand entry. And basically, grand entry is all about your dignitaries, right? Because they're the people that you know we've come to listen to. They're the people who have worked very hard to, to do the work that needs to be done. So what we do is we honor these people. As well as, we, as we're bringing culture into this, we have our drum. This is Spirit Vision here. That is our drum, our community drum here in Hamilton. And we have a very large urban indigenous community here in Hamilton. I don't know if you're very aware of it, but we do. So uh, we do work together very closely, and we do a lot of things together. Uh, there's a number of things that have been planned. Uh, there's a teepee across the street for those, and I'd like to thank those who did come over for the sunrise ceremony in the rain. <laughs> Um, I have to admit, there has been a lot of things that have been against us in trying to provide all these cultural elements to what we are doing. But again, things are meant to be, right? And it's all been a learning process. And at the same time, things are meant to be and done in a good way. And that's what we hope to do today. So with all said and done, what I'd like to do, again, is introduce <coughs> our drummers here, we ha is Spirit Vision. And they are going to honor us as we welcome um, our grant entry. What I would like to do, though, is and when they start and grant entry does come in, I need everybody to stand. Men, if you're wearing hats, you need to remove them, please. Because again, we're showing sign of respect. And those are the things that we do as part of this. So.
to now announce our flag carriers and staff carriers as they come in to place their staffs and flags. I guess we're looking at Laura. I have you lit first. Laura carries the, the headache community staff, actually, Eagle staff. We also have Al Loft. Oh, we've got Jackie coming up. Jackie, Jackie Dale, who's one of our grandmothers within our community. Very honored that she's here with us, too, as well as Laura. We have Al behind. Al's coming up ne next. Actually, this year we had a homeless staff uh, developed for our community and the men that we deal with at Odra Hecta. And uh, so anyway, Al is representing Odra Hecta with the man with our homelessness staff that was created this year. We also have <sighs> Lyndon George. I always want to call him George first. <laughs> hey, Lyndon, and he carries his pride flag. We're very proud of our two-spirited people. We also have Marilyn, Marilyn Wright, who's carrying the Ontario flag as well with us today. Marilyn is a very much a community member, has been involved many, many, many years, and she is the chair for the ABCAB committee. Thank you for coming, Marilyn. I know she has been really sick over the weekend, so I'm happy she's here. We have Shiloh, who's coming up with the Canadian flag, our version of the Canadian flag. <laughs> so Shiloh works with the city of Hamilton, uh, the indigenous strategy, and I'm happy that Shiloh is here with us. Next is a, a, a new, Patrick. Patrick, I don't know personally, but he carries the Métis flag. <coughs> and we're honored to have him here, representing the Métis people. We have Randy here, who's representing the Haudenosaunee. He's carrying the Confederate flag. And uh, he kind of got put into this position this morning, so I'm honored that he took on that, that challenge. <laughs> so he is here. We also have Steve. Steve. What are you carrying there? <laughs> Nishnabi flag. Thank you, Steve, for coming in. And again, he was voluntold this morning by Cindy Sue. <laughs> and, then, and if anyone knows Cindy Sue, you know when you're voluntold. <laughs> we, we have Dean, who's uh, one of our community members. Actually, he was, I've worked with Dean many years, so he is representing the American flag. And I'm happy that Dean walked in the door at that moment, and he was another one voluntold. <laughs> That's one thing when you work with an indigenous community and when we're doing ceremony and things go through, it's like there's times you are voluntold to do things. We next have Albert. Come on, Albert. He's representing our veterans, and he is a veteran, and very proud that he too was voluntold as he was walking through the door. So I'm very honored that Albert is here with us today. We have Rob. And Rob is with the city of Hamilton, and I guess this is the city of Hamilton? Okay. <laughs> so we're very honored that Rob was able to come in and uh, he was probably voluntold too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we have Nicole who's also with the city of Hamilton under the indigenous strategy. And she's carrying the Mississaugas of the new credit flag. So thank you, Nicole, for joining us. We next have Sam Morelli, who's one of our counselors. Also, if you can join us. We also have Tim, who's the uh, conference CEO. Wait, right here, fine. So we have Tim, and I, and I made a comment to him. It's pretty good to organize a conference when you're far away. <laughs> so I gotta learn to do that. But this man is under a lot of pressure. Time, time is everything. And I even had Luke say, Yvonne, I've never seen you like this before. I said, it's all because of time. <laughs> so trying to, to, to change Tim's ways here. <laughs> anyway, we also have the Honorable Minister Declo coming in as well. And I apologize if I didn't pronounce your name right. But thank you for being here. It's an honor. Come join our group. We also have Sandy, who's coming in from Six Nations. To, to say a few words as well and to bring greetings. So, welcome to our group. And we have Joanne Webb, and she's also representing the Métis. No. New, credit. New, credit. New credit, new credit, okay. So she's coming in representing New Credit, and thank you very much for coming today, Joanne, at this last, last short minute. We also have, do we have anywhere else down there? I, 
I have a John. Can we get you to come over this way? Sean O'Dell? Jacques Lavallee? Clay? Oh, we're bringing in our, our elders, our, lived, um, our community people, our cultural people. So if you could just move your tags. We have Clay, we have Ed, we have Peta. Okay, so actually we have Al Loft too. He was in this crew somewhere. Well, I don't know where he went, right but here, right here. he's here. Oh, he's in the back, I'm sorry. So anyway, I thank you very much. Are you going to do one more song? Or we're good? Are we doing one more song? Okay, so what we're doing now is I ask you to remain standing. Okay, again, it's a part of respect. And we are now going to do an honor song to honor the people that are here. And then we can seat. And I'm going to say a couple more words and then we can get the show going. Okay. Thank you. I would also like to mention. I would also like to mention. You could have a seat now. Is that I forgot the, our dancers down here, and I apologize, guys. <laughs> that line was so big coming up. <laughs> and so on the side, we also have our dancers, and they will be around for the, the morning as well. Um, so there's many of them. We were hoping to get everybody up on stage at some point so that you could see everybody. And um, as you can see, that's very difficult. So what I would like to do is 
have our delegation take their seats mm -hmm. until I'm going to do a prayer and say a few words, and then we'll ask this way. Uh, the delegation goes that way. The flag, flag carriers, need, please place your flags now. Don't worry. <laughs> As you can see, bringing a large delegation up front is, is difficult at times. So if anyone ever organizes things, think of these things. <laughs> but again, I would like to thank very much our delegation coming in and drumming, placing the flags, the staffs. I feel like Phil's doing a production down here as he's guiding everybody. Everybody needs a guy like Phil. Tim must just love having Phil around because he's that guy behind the scenes who's always making sure that things go right. So with that said and done, I would like to just invite the dancers up. Come on, guys. I know this is I'm going off cue and I'm probably going to mix up the agenda somehow, but I'm bringing them up. <laughs> Come on, guys. Aren't they a beautiful bunch? And I know I don't have no drummers here to drum for them so they can dance, but I would ask them to be here right now while I do my prayer, okay? Because they're my support team right now. <laughs> so when you're up here standing at a crowd, looking at a crowd this large, you need all the support you can get. So I love the fact of having the beautiful people here. So with that, I'm going to say my prayer. It's up to you whether you want to stand or seat, that's okay. I'd like to thank the Creator for all that we have, for the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the land we walk upon. Creator, we pray to you this day to give thanks again for everything we hold dear and precious to our hearts, Creator. We thank you for this beautiful day, this day of life, this day of living, and for this we pray and we give thanks. We give thanks, Creator, to Brother Son who rises each day to give us light, warmth, and energy. And for this we pray and we give thanks to Brother Son. We give thanks, Creator, to the north, the south, the east, and the west winds, as they blow away the pollutions to bring the clear air and the rains and the snows to replenish Mother Earth. And for this too, Creator, we pray and we give thanks. We give thanks, Creator, to the nighttime sky and Grandmother Moon and the stars above as she looks after the women, the children, and Mother Earth herself. For this too, Creator, we pray and we give thanks. We give thanks, Creator, to the two-leggeds, the four-leggeds, the six-leggeds, the eight-leggeds, the swimmers, the flyers, the crawlers, for all the creatures you place before us, Creator. We pray and give thanks for those creatures. And we pray and give thanks, Creator, from the smallest of seeds to the tallest of trees as you provide us nourishment, medicines, and shelter. For this too, Creator, we pray and we give thanks. And we pray and give thanks, Creator, for those who have passed on, passed over to the other side, our ancestors, our loved ones. Those who have left this world and journey to the next, we pray for their well-being of spirit and mind as they make that journey to the other side. And for this too, Creator, we pray and we give thanks. And we ask you, Creator, to look after everybody under this roof. Keep us of good health, of good mind. We also ask for protection. We want to make sure that our families are safe that we have left behind so that we will join them later. So look after us and keep us in a good way with a good heart and a good mind, especially being at this conference, homelessness. No one in Canada deserves to be homeless. This is a rich country. So Creator, I pray for all of us that we can come to some solutions, that we can speak and talk to each other in a good way, in a good heart, so we can solve these problems that are there in front of us. So, Creator, again, I pray, and I ask you of all these things. Now I thank you. I would now like to ask the dancers, they can go and join the rest of the crew down at the other end. We'll bring this back up. Go that way. I feel like a you know, traffic cop up here. <laughs> Have a seat, guys. 
I, I, I don't even know what time it is. I cannot see any clocks or anything, so I'm just going to say what I need to say. <laughs> We, um, as part of the planning committee, and there's a number of us out there, and I cannot remember everybody's name, but we worked hard. We worked hard to bring this to you. And as part of the indigenous component, it was our opportunity to bring forward our culture, who we are as people. In front of me, you'll notice that there are a couple tables with uh, ties, uh, actually ties, tobacco. Tobacco is one of our medicines. It's a very important medicine to us very sacred medicine. We also have uh, sage, cedar, and sweetgrass on, on our tables here. I've noticed too there's three candles and I know there's probably a purpose for those as well. You, um, what we would like to do, but it's going to be very difficult because I didn't realize how crunched in everybody really would be. So what I'm going to suggest is at some point in time during today that people at your own time come up and take some of these tobacco ties. And the reason for the tobacco ties is the fact, again, tobacco is our sacred medicine. So what I want you to do is take that tobacco, come up here, and you can take one of the little ties and there's tobacco in it, have it in your left hand, and we pull, put things in our left because it's closest to our heart. It's on that same side of your heart. So we're looking at, you can put your prayers and your thoughts and your emotions into that tobacco. Okay, you neither can take that tobacco and take it over to the sacred fire. As I had mentioned, I thank people for coming to the sacred fire this morning at seven o'clock, and yes, it is at seven o'clock. <laughs> so for those who are early risers, go over to that sacred fire. It's across the street, it's on city, city hall property there. It's the only teepee in town right now. <laughs> So take your sacred fire over there, or take your tobacco tie to the sacred fire, and go meet Dave. Dave Root is our fire keeper, and speak to him if you want to learn more. But take your, your prayers of that fire, and you can put it into that fire to burn. For those who may not want to go over to the sacred fire because it's raining outside and you don't want to get wet, you could also keep that with you, and when you return home or wherever, maybe, maybe the sun might come out in the next day or so, you could take that and lay that tobacco by a tree. You could lay that tobacco by water, okay? Those are natural elements, they're creator elements. Those prayers can be offered there, okay? So it's not like you, you, know, you take this, oh my goodness, where will it go? There's many places it can go. But your prayers will go into that. So that's the reason for the, the medicines here. As well as the four colors, red, yellow, black, and white, and they represent to us unity. We've learned many things from these colors. They, they represent the four directions, north, south, east, and west. They also represent the four races of man, the black man, the white man, the yellow man being from the east, and ours, the red man. So all these things have meaning in what we do. And that's one of the things that has been hard to, to kind to educate. Everything we do usually has a purpose, right? We don't just do things off the top of our heads because we felt like it at the moment. Ah, that's, sometimes that could be true, but at the same time, um, there's usually reasons. The sun comes up in the east, so the fire has to be facing the east. Right? So they, and for those who went to that fire, feeling that fire is lighting the fire within ourselves. Seeing that sunrise in the morning, that is the most energy you will get from you know, the greatest power in the universe is the sun. When you do these things, it, it, it makes you feel something inside. You become different in that sense. It awakens you. So that's why it's important. That's why that fire outside is so important to us, because it is an awakening. And that fire will be lit until this conference is done. 24-7, there's going to be somebody out there by that fire, looking after it, maintaining it. Just like the drum, how important the drum is to us, the heartbeat of our people, right? So these things aren't just little fluffs and feathers. They have meaning. They have meaning to what we do as, as indigenous people. So I didn't even say anything about myself. Probably wondering, who's this crazy woman up here talking to you? <laughs> anyway, again, my name's Yvonne Miracle. I'm a Bear Clan. I'm from the Mohawk Nation. I am the eldest of six sisters and brothers. I have 18 nieces and nephews under the age of 30. 
I have probably about 21 great nieces and nephews at this time. I am a grandmother. I have three grandchildren of my own. I have one daughter. So, but I have put a lot of my life into my community because my community is my extended family. And I think with all of us, we all feel the same. We are an extension of family. So when we see each other and we get to meet each other for the first time, it's like seeing brothers and sisters again or cousins and aunties and uncles. That's who we are as a people. So again, the issue of homelessness, this is a heavy issue, especially amongst our own people as Indigenous people, because many of our people are represented here. And I think that's why there's such an Indigenous inclusion at this point in time. I think people are seeing the truth of matters that are out there. You know, we're not just homeless. We are homeless in many ways, even homeless of spirit. And that's what we're trying to bring into this conference at this point in time is spirit. And I don't mean to bore people with what I'm saying, and I'm hoping that people are learning with things that I'm saying. So with all said and done, also to let people know, you're probably wondering about the pictures that are along the walls. Al Loft, who is my partner here in Hamilton, uh, he is the uh, cultural uh, support, and I am grandmother for this duration. But Al Loft worked on this exhibit, he's a photographer, and he was the photographer at the Native Indian Inuit Photographers Association back in the later 90s, or actually mid-90s into 2000. There's actually two exhibitions here. There's the first exhibit, the first one was done is on this side, is the connection, and the other one is reconnecting, is on this side. If you want to learn more about the exhibit, there's little plaques to you can read about the people. Back in the 90s and the early 2000s, in the 2000s, these were our homeless at that time. In fact, we did lose some of our people to, to the hard times out there. So it's really good if people could take a look at our pictures because this is back in the 90s. We're 2018. How far have we come? We, as Indigenous people, knew already of our problem that we were facing. Because if not, why did Al take these pictures? So it must have been clear in his view there was an issue. And again, if you read the material, he was quite right. He knew at that time. And even NEPA at that time, we did a video too on homelessness. So we were addressing homelessness back in the, the 90s. Like I said, we're in 2018. So. We have a lot of work to do. Some people have done a lot of work already, but we need to all of us get on board so that we don't have homeless anymore. And especially for the indigenous people. We need the leadership to listen to us. We know how to fix problems, but we have to be at those tables. We have to be at those tables to help make decisions. You also have to include homeless. You have to include homeless. They will help you with answers, okay? I have been working with homeless for many years, and one of the things that I found difficult is when people start things up, they don't include the people they're talking about. So it, if you want to know about indigenous, talk to indigenous people. If you want to know about homelessness, talk to homeless people. No disrespect to the higher-ups, as my mother would say, the mucky mucks. <laughs> but they don't have all the answers. They're looking to the people for the answers. They are representatives to speak on your behalf, but we have to give them the answers, okay? So anyway, I know I've been talking a lot. I'm probably way past my time, right? Way past my time. Someone, someone come up here and relieve me here. So anyway. I'm very happy to be a part of this. I'm also going to be here for three days. So there is a number of elders that have come in. Elders, cultural keepers, traditional workers. It's very hard to put that label elder on someone. You carry a lot of responsibility, okay? So we're doing our best through what we know to try to help people, okay? I would also like to welcome the people here with lived experience. Okay. There's a number of people I know I brought in as well. I'm really happy you're here, you know, because this is what's going to make a conference difference. Because again, we have the people we're talking about, we have the people with answers here. Come on up here, Tim, I know you're... <laughs> and I'm going to shut up now. <laughs>
Yvonne can talk a lot, if anyone knows. Anyway, I'd like to pass this on to our master of ceremony here, Tim. Thank you. I hope I did okay. Oh, you did good. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, you know, I, I, um, we only met Yvonne working through this, uh, organizing this conference, and uh, she, she mentioned she's a community grandmother, and I really feel like you've got what you've, it, what you've got this morning so far is mm -hmm. kind of the product of a grandmother's love for her uh, community. So I want to thank Yvonne uh, for that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2018 National Conference on Ending Homelessness. I, uh, I will have a bit more uh, to say in a bit, but first uh, I want to start by inviting Monique Lavallee, uh, Hamilton Executive Director's Aboriginal Coalition and Marilyn Wright, Aboriginal Community Advisory Board to welcome participants. Good morning, my name is Marilyn Wright and I am the current co-chair of the Aboriginal CAP for the city of Hamilton. And But the, today I have a dual personality because I'm also substituting for Monique Lavallee who is the, one of the chairs of the Hamilton Executive Directors Aboriginal Coalition. I'd like to welcome everyone to the territory, and I know that you will do good things these next three days. Um, I have been involved with the Aboriginal CAP for at least five years. Um, previous to that, I've been active in the community. I'm also the uh, one of the co-chairs of the Aboriginal Advisory Committee for the City of Hamilton. And I'm sure that you'll have speakers later on who will talk about the city. If I may, and this is a little bit off topic, I'd like to everyone give Yvonne Miracle a round of applause because she is next week is going to receive the Ham one of the Hamilton Dis Distinguished Citizens Awards. And it's only a small recognition of the things that she has done for our people and her community, which she loves. And I love her deeply. Um, I appreciate her taking the helm of a lot of things that a lot of us were afraid to tackle. She's a great mentor and she's a great leader. So if I, if Yvonne would stand up so we could recognize her as. <laughs> and Yvonne is just one of the many people that have put this conference together and they've worked hard and I'm sure that at the end of the next three days you will come away with great ideas, great aspirations and the next time that you go out onto the street and you see a, someone who is homelessness, homeless or struggling, please give them a hug. Now. It's uh, now my pleasure uh, to welcome Sandy Porter, a representative of the Six Nations Band, to make welcoming remarks. Good morning, everybody. Um, before I make a few remarks, um, I just want to say something. Uh, I was sitting um, on the chair there and I was thinking um, what an honor it is and who would have thought that I'd be 
sitting here today with the gentleman I'm sitting in, in this room today with so many uh, wonderful people. And I want to relate this uh, just a little bit about caring people. And like, like yourselves, you're out there in many different capacities, and fi all fighting for a good cause. So back when I was a, a young man, I never dreamed that I'd be standing up here today. But if it wasn't for a kind person, a caring person, a loving person, I, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, that gentleman, he passed on. Uh, his name was Les Anderson. And he took me by the hand and helped me go to school and uh, make a little bit of a transition in my life. Took the time. Um, kind of like wraparound service, a wraparound service. So I just want to say that um, caring people, um, people who have an interest in a, in a, in a common cause, I never ever think um, that your efforts can change a life because it, it certainly can. And I'm standing up here today as uh, a testament to that. So before I make a few comments, I just want to say um, thank you. And I just wanted to make that, that a note this morning. So, so on behalf of um, Chief Hill and the Six Nations of the Grand River community, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all delegates to the National Conference on Ending Homelessness. First and foremost, I want to commend frontline workers, volunteers, coordinators, and others who take the time and effort to end homelessness. I'd also like to thank the organizers of this conference for undertaking the time to plan and coordinate a, such an important event. I know um, it's, it's a lot of work. I was the executive director of the Ontario Native Welfare Administrators Association for 10 years and we had to um, plan and coordinate uh, two annual conferences so I know there's a lot of work uh, that's involved with planning conferences. It's challenging to find the words that can express how thankful we are to those who through their kindness and, and consideration reach out to those who are impacted by homelessness. It's also challenging to realize the devastating effects individuals and families experience when confronted by homelessness. Some impacts we, we know can be despair, homelessness, depression, hunger, helplessness, just to mention a few. We also know that there are caring and concerned people in this world who are at this very moment taking the action to make a difference. Because of the efforts of these caring people, the homeless person is no longer homeless, no longer depressed, no longer sad, no longer limited. They are free to soar like an eagle. I'm certain the National Conference to End Homelessness will provide all delegates with valuable information and enhanced inspiration to end homelessness. In closing, again, on behalf of Chief Hill and the Six Nations of the Grand River community, welcome to the National Conference to End Homelessness. And one last thing I would like to say is I think that you should uh, give applause to yourself right now. You're doing great things. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great conference. Thank you, uh, Sandy. It's now my pleasure to welcome uh, Sam Marella from the uh, Councillor from the City of Hamilton. Hamilton has been uh, our very generous host and one of the reasons we brought the conference here is because of some of the incredible work that the City of Hamilton uh, is doing. So welcome, Councillor. Thank you, uh, Tim, and welcome to Hamilton. I'm here uh, on behalf of uh, Mayor Fred Eisenberger, who couldn't be here today, but I'm proudly standing here on, on his behalf. This is a record-breaking conference, folks, uh, with more than 1,300 delegates, more than ever before. So congratulations to the organizers. <laughs> it really is an important time for us to meet. As everyone knows in this country, affordable housing and homelessness are issues that are impacting cities all across Canada. We welcome the additional investments 
by the federal government through the National Housing Strategy and the upcoming renewal of the federal homelessness program, Reaching Home. I'd like to acknowledge and welcome our dignitaries in the room, including the Honorable Jean-Yves Duclos, Minister of Families, Children, and Social Development. I'd also like to uh, welcome uh, First Nations and Indigenous leadership, as well as Indigenous elders, wisdom holders, and knowledge keepers. Also with us is Mayor Mike O'Brien, Mayor of Fredericton. Welcome, sir. And also MP Bob Bertina, who's sitting at the, the table as well. Welcome, sir. We are excited uh, to showcase our exciting work in Hamilton. More importantly, we are looking forward to learning from inspiring work happening in communities across Canada by the experts in this room. Together, our collective efforts will accelerate us towards ending homelessness in Canada. Hamilton has always been known for progress. The work of ending homelessness is yet another example of our resilience and perseverance. We were early adopters of Housing First, which focuses on moving people who are experiencing homelessness as quickly as possible from street to emergency shelter to permanent housing. We were enthusiastic participants in Canada's 20,000 Homes campaign to rapidly find permanent housing for people who are homeless. We are now leading the way on coordinated access and integrated service delivery across the homelessness serving system. During the last council term, we also pioneered the Poverty Reduction Fund, which was spearheaded by Mayor Eisenberger, which pledged $50 million over the next decade to be put into affordable housing and Indigenous poverty reduction programs. We in Hamilton strongly believe that housing is a right for all people. We are strongly committed to doing our part in ending chronic homelessness in Canada, and I welcome you here again today in Hamilton, and many thanks for your time. So it's now uh, my pleasure, to, uh, I will introduce uh, Minister Jean-Yves Duclos, but before I do that, uh, I want to introduce one of his uh, predecessors, the mother and grandmother of the homelessness partnering strategy is Claudette Bradshaw, who is sat here right in front, and I'm pleased to say she is uh, one of the co-chairs of the Canadian Alliance on Homelessness, and I think uh, it is terrific that she could join us today, and I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank her for uh, for being a champion for homelessness all those years uh, when it was so difficult and for giving us the base that we work from today. So thank you, Claudette. So it's now my pleasure to welcome uh, Minister Duclos up to, up to the stage. It's a, it, this, uh, we talk about you know the success of a conference and having 1,300 people in a room. I think that there are 1,300 people here today in large measure uh, due to the fact we now have federal leadership back uh, in housing and ending homelessness. And you can feel the energy and the enthusiasm and the positivity in, in our sector today. And that's due in large measure, I think, to the leadership of, of Minister Duclos. And it's my pleasure now to welcome him to the stage. Bonjour tout le monde, merci de me donner ce plaisir d'être en magnifique compagnie dans un magnifique environnement et pour des magnifiques objectifs que nous partageons tous. J'aimerais dire à quel point nous sommes tous un peu émus d'avoir entendu il y a quelques minutes les propos, la vision et la capacité d'unir d'Yvonne. Parlant de magnifique compagnie, je veux souligner le départ la présence d'Adam Vaughan, le secrétaire parlementaire 
avec lequel j'ai le grand plaisir de travailler régulièrement, de Bob Bertina, qui est le député de Hamilton East, Stony Creek, de Sherry Benson, euh, qui est un, un défenseur là, extraordinaire du droit à tous et à toutes au Canada d'être bien et de s'épanouir au Canada, Karen Vecchio, que je n'ai pas encore vue, mais que je sais qu'il partage les mêmes objectifs, Claudette, quel plaisir de vous revoir après trop de temps, et, mais je sais qu'autour de la salle, vous le savez, il y a tellement de gens qui vous aiment et qui aiment ce que vous avez fait pour notre pays au cours des nombreuses années. Et j'aimerais aussi souligner que beaucoup d'autres personnes aimeraient être avec nous aujourd'hui dans le cadre de, du festival d'Ivali. C'est un peu difficile pour eux, la communauté hindoue, sikhs, jains et bouddhistes sont dans une période de festivité. Le festival de la lumière, le festival de la lumière qui est plus forte que l'ombre, le bien qui est plus fort que le mal et la connaissance qui est plus forte que l'ignorance. And I would like to say this time in English how wonderful company I am in with uh, today, uh, with the kind and generous words of Yvonne, the, the wonderful uh, presence that I see in the room of all of you. Uh, I'll speak about you in a moment. And uh, Adam Vaughan, our parliamentary secretary, Bob Bertina, member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek, Sherry Benson. Sherry, you're a strong advocate of the right of every Canadian to live decently and in respect in this country. Karen Vecchio is going to join us very soon. Claudette, what a wonderful statement we just heard. I met you about a year or two ago. You told me uh, how changing that work that you had done was for communities across Canada, but how changing and in, how impactful it was also in your life, being able to, to see the progress that we can achieve together when we work together. And I mentioned in French earlier the fact that yesterday I was uh, not too far from here in the biggest Hindu temple in Canada. The Hindu, the Sikh, the Jain, the Jain and the Buddhist communities are celebrating their Diwali festival, the festival of lights. Know the fact that light is stronger than darkness, ignorance weaker than knowledge, and good better and stronger than evil. And in the wonderful company of Hamilton, thank you for being such a progressive, a, a vibrant, and strong community and showing the way for other communities across Canada. Of course, I would like to thank, by, to start by thanking the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness for their tremendous work in organizing this important conference and for their very kind invitation. Tim, through you, may I also congratulate and thank all of the members of your team. We know you've been very busy in the last few weeks. No, but look at this tremendous outcome. Thank you so much for your leadership. Of course, I would like to thank everyone in this room and many others outside of this room for, their, for your extraordinary work, the work that you do every day to build a better society, a better Canada. As policymakers, funders, researchers, advocates, Canadians with lived experiences of homelessness, community leaders, and frontline workers, your work is essential to the way we tackle homelessness and will tackle homelessness in communities across the country. You know that you're making a real difference in people's lives. Just here in Hamilton, there is a significant decrease in the number of people with nowhere to live. Indeed, the most recent point-in-time connection survey found 25% fewer homelessness pe homeless people in the city as compared to 2016 results. This survey was part of the 2016 national point-in-time count, which was supported across the country by the federal government. As a minister responsible for the government of Canada's fight against homelessness, I find such numbers encouraging. Such progress supports suggest that community-based approaches can really work. Et je vais revenir là-dessus parce que la nouvelle version de Vers un chez soi, c'est une approche basée sur les communautés. Last week, I had the pleasure with, of meeting with organizations in Ottawa from Hamilton, such as the Women's YWCA. I was happy to see the amazing work they are doing with the support of federal programs. Thank you again for your partnership and for your leadership. I would like to give you a brief preview of some of the results from the soon-to-be-released National Shelter Study, which includes new data for 2015 and 2016. Additional results are being presented by departmental officials at this event. Et si je peux ouvrir une parenthèse, je vais mentionner les, 
officials, les fonctionnaires. La fonction publique a un rôle extraordinaire à jouer au Canada. La fonction publique fait face à des pressions importantes, mais elle sait à quel point leur travail est fondamental pour s'inspirer de votre expertise et de votre, euh, de votre motivation à faire des changements majeurs au Canada. J'aimerais les féliciter et les remercier en passant, parce que je sais qu'ils sont dans, cette, dans cette, cette salle et je sais qu'ils font face à des défis importants. An estimated 133,000 people experienced homelessness at an emergency shelter in Canada in 2016, while the majority, 54% of shelter users, or adults aged 25 to 49, shelter use by older Canadians and seniors, unfortunately, has been increasing. Indigenous peoples continue to be overrepresented in Canada's emergency shelters. While the indigenous population varies from less than 5% in some suburban communities in Canada to over 90% in many northern communities, we see that in each community, each community where data is available, indigenous peoples are overrepresented in homeless shelters compared to the overall population. Now we know that homelessness is a complex problem and ending, ending it requires the cooperation of many players, the right supports at the right time and access to affordable housing. But as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, my boss, and we all need to listen to our boss, often says, one person on the streets in Canada is too many. And that is why together we must do everything we can to reduce homelessness, meet the needs of vulnerable Canadians, and provide every Canadian with a safe, accessible, and affordable place to call home. Now, I think that this past year, we all made a real difference in the lives of people facing homelessness across the country. A year ago, Canada's first ever national housing strategy was announced. This historic 10-year, $40 billion plus investment will give more Canadians a, call, a place to call home. This is also a strategy that includes $2.2 billion to tackle directly homelessness across Canada. Last June, Reaching Home, Canada's new homelessness partnering strategy was announced. Along with other national housing strategy investments, Reaching Home will help meet our ambitious but realistic goal of reducing chronic homelessness by at least 50% over the next 10 years. And more recently, in August, Canada's first ever national poverty reduction strategy, Opportunity for All, was also launched. And we're just getting started. As you are aware, Reaching Home will be rolling out on April 1st, 2019, replacing the existing homelessness partnering strategy, which Claudette launched some years ago. Over the last year, we've consulted with communities, provinces, and territories, indigenous partners, local service providers, experts, and most importantly, with people with lived experiences of homelessness from across Canada. These consultations were guided by the hard and difficult work but extremely important one of the Advisory Committee on Homelessness, chaired by Parliamentary Secretary Adam Vaughan. I would like to take this opportunity to thank once again all Canadians who participated in these consultations, many of whom are in this room today. Your comments and ideas helped us build Reaching Home. Reaching Home is a great phrase. It says everything. It is reaching home together and this is your strategy. However, we did not just, just hear from you. We also listened, and we're now ready to act. The announcement of $2.2 billion over 10 years under the National Housing Strategy is a significant investment. Funding will ramp up over the first two years of the program and reach maximum levels in 2021-2022. By 2021, this will double the overall annual investment in the program compared to 2015. Reaching Home will also increase funding for all designated communities. I want to assure you that there will be no disruption in service during the transition from HPS to Reaching Home. Funding level for all communities will be communicated to community entities as formal negotiations begin on new contribution arrangements. 
Increased funding will also enable reaching home to expand and to create new designated communities. Following an open and transparent application process to be launched before the end of fiscal year, we will add four to six new communities to the designated communities funding stream. This expansion will not affect the funding received by the existing 61 designated communities. Desi dedicated funding to address indigenous homelessness will also be increased on the reaching home. To ensure continuity, continuity of service, current funding under the Aboriginal homelessness stream, which will be recast as the indigenous homelessness stream, will be maintained effective April 1, 2019. Now, as you know, the Government of Canada is committed to achieving reconciliation with Indigenous peoples and supporting their, their self-determination. The relationship with Indigenous people is the most important relationship of our government. And that is therefore why we are engaging with national Indigenous organizations and Indigenous service providers. We will work together to develop an approach on how to allocate the additional funding. Above all, we want to ensure it is delivered in alignment with the unique rights, interests, culture, and circumstances of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis Nation. Reaching Home will continue to provide direct funding to munici municipalities and local service providers to help them address local priorities. We heard you loud and clear when you asked that the central pillar of Reaching Home be community First, under reaching home, communities will therefore work towards community level outcomes, including a 50% reduction in chronic homelessness over the next 10 years. This will keep decision making where it should be at the local level and will give communities greater flexibility to address local priorities. While housing first will continue to be promoted as a proven and effective approach, more flexibility will be given to communities to meet their specific needs. The new outcomes-based approach will give communities greater flexibility to achieve, to achieve better results for vulnerable Canadians. We will ensure recognition of successes while ensuring support to those communities who will face challenges and will make significant support towards progress towards our common vision where we all end homelessness in Canada. That also implies that communities will be able to target and focus their interventions on vulnerable groups, such as marginalized youth, women fleeing violence, indigenous people, racialized communities, and veterans. Community-level indicators and outcomes will be co-designed with communities and experts to ensure they are rigorous, practical, and flexible. In addition to having more flexibility, communities will be asked to report publicly on results. They will do so through a new annual community progress report. In that report, communities will demonstrate the effectiveness of their tangible actions and the, hopeness, the hopefulness generated by their progress in preventing and reducing homelessness. In support of this outcomes-based approach, Reaching Home will introduce coordinated access as a program priority. Coordinated access will help communities shift towards a more coordinated, a more teamwork approach to tackling homelessness. Coordinated access will help communities ensure both fairness and efficiency by prioritizing people most in need of assistance and matching individuals to appropriate housing and other services in a more coordinated way. Coordinated access will provide communities with more comprehensive data on their local homelessness, homeless population. In time, that will also help establish baselines to enable communities to measure progress towards important outcomes, including the reduction of chronic homelessness. Coordinated access also means better outcomes for clients. It means that regardless of where someone first seeks services, access is available and services and information are shared and coordinated so that stories only need to be told once. This helps streamline access to services and can also reduce trauma for clients. Now, we know that the implementation of coordinated access cannot be one size fits all approach and therefore will require the collaboration of all partners at the community level 
and the federal government will be also an additional partner. To support this transformation, communities will, in fact, and indeed, be provided with direct funding and support to help them get started, including training and technical assistance. Federal funding will also be available to support the adoption of HIFIS in support of the implementation of coordinated access. It also takes time to implement the coordinated access system, and that is why communities will have a three-year time frame to implement that coordinated access system and federal support to do so. Tackling homelessness is a shared jurisdictional responsibility. To develop and deliver their coordinated access system, designated communities will want to work in close collaboration with their partners. Discussions with provinces and territories are currently on the way to explore opportunities for strengthened coordination of complementary federal, provincial, and municipal homelessness programming. That includes priority setting and community planning processes, implementing coordinated access systems, fostering information sharing and streamlining program reporting, and enhancing program governance through ongoing dialogue. As you can see, Reaching Home will introduce bold changes to the way our government supports communities in their efforts to prevent and to reduce homelessness. To support communities in the implementation of Reaching Home, a transition period will be in place starting April 1, 2019. That transition period will give time to communities to determine how to prioritize their investments within the new program parameters and therefore avoid service disruptions. Communities will immediately be able, however, to access the enhanced flexibility that Reaching Home will offer. J'ai évidemment une pensée toute particulière pour ceux et celles parmi vous dans cette salle qui travaillent très fort auprès des personnes les plus vulnérables au Québec. Je tiens, je tiens à vous dire que les discussions avec le gouvernement du Québec sont en cours et se poursuivront au cours des prochaines semaines afin de déterminer la meilleure manière dont Vers un chez-soi sera mise en œuvre chez nous, au Québec, dans le cadre d'une entente Québec-Canada. Built upon the incredible goodwill and expertise of many people in this room, Reaching Home is designed to be transformational. It represents a major shift in how we will tackle homelessness together in Canada. With your continued guidance, I am confident that these changes will help us achieve better outcomes for vulnerable Canadians. Reaching home will take us where we need to go, towards a Canada where homelessness is history. Thank you again so much for your time, for your work, for your hard work, and for having me with you today. Have a great conference. Thank you, uh, Minister Duclos. Uh, it, you know, it's, we, we talk about a, 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 the minister talked about a 50% reduction target, and he said that is a realistic target. I think that is a realistic target, but I think, and I think we know, uh, we can all do a lot better, and we will. So it's a privilege uh, to be here uh, in Hamilton on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and with the land, within the lands protected by the dish with one spoon wampum uh, agreement. I gotta tell you, standing in front uh, of this room, I can't even begin to tell you how excited uh, I am to be here. You know, I've had a chance to chat with some of you uh, earlier as, as we were getting organized, some of you yesterday, and, and there, it feels to me now like there is some real energy in our movement. There is urgency, there is positivity, and for the first time, you know, I, uh, not for the first time, but I, I feel like there's real hope, right? For how long, for 30 years in our sector, we've been facing this problem that feels insurmountable. But now it feels to me like there is some real hope. You know, seeing so many brilliant friends, so many people by driven, uh, driven by passion uh, and purpose, people who are moving mountains to end homelessness, uh, is, you know, honestly beyond inspiring for me. And I think there's good reason for us to be positive. We are gathered here, this is like the 
annual meeting of our, of our movement. We are gathered here at a, at a pivotal time uh, for our, the movement to end homelessness in Canada. For decades, advocates have been calling for a national housing strategy and federal leadership on homelessness. Today, we've got a national housing strategy and the money from that strategy is starting to arrive in our communities. And we also have that federal, important federal uh, leadership. There is a, we are now, in, in Ottawa, they're now talking about a legislated federal commitment to the right to housing. Something few of us, I don't think. <laughs> yes, that is, I hope. I don't think many of us would have even dreamed we would have been talking about a legislated federal, uh, federally legislated right to housing a few years ago, and that is expected shortly. And of course, we've got the new uh, Reaching Home, a 10-year federal homelessness strategy that'll launch in April. At the same time, uh, communities from coast to coast to coast are embracing housing first, are using data-driven decision-making and collective action to transform their homeless systems. Now, we've been on the ground uh, in over 40 communities across the country through our training and technical assistance program, helping you build high-impact Housing First programs. The 38 communities of the 20,000 Homes Campaign in eight provinces have housed over 18,000 of Canada's most vulnerable homeless people. <laughs> On Friday, uh, the federal government, uh, thank you, Minister Duclos, announced a major investment in the campaign that'll accelerate the progress of those 38 communities toward ending homelessness. The minister, thank you, yes, please. The minister mentioned that there's a transition period in the new reaching home. But all I know, and I've seen in our communities and with our campaign, there is an urgency on the ground. There is an, you know, the, an itch to get started and a drive to do better. And with our campaign, by March 31st, our campaign communities will achieve the goal to house 20,000 people. There will be at least 14 communities with quality by name list, quality real-time data of all people experiencing homelessness. 10 communities will be implementing or have implemented coordinated access systems. Five communities will be reducing chronic homelessness and we hope one community will achieve functional zero chronic homelessness by March. You know, I've, in, in past conferences, I've said, we've talked about the beginning of the end of a homelessness, uh, but my friends, the end of homelessness in Canada has begun. The road ahead is not gonna be without challenges, but we're gathered here as a movement resolutely focused on our shared mission to end homelessness. But I'm gonna pause for a moment to, for us to reflect on the reason we're here. So we have these candles on, on the tables in front of us. These candles are here as a memorial, memorial to lives lost to homelessness and to the lives that will be lost the longer homelessness continues. So I wanna take a moment of silence and I wanna take a moment for us to remember the people we all know that have been lost to homelessness. I wanna take a moment for us to put the urgency of our work to the front of our minds and take a moment for us each to quietly personally resolve ourselves to taking action in their memory. Thank you. My friends, this conference is about action. In the next two and a half days you're here, you're gonna pick up new ideas, innovations, skills that can help you advance your work at home and I urge you to listen and learn with the intention to act. 
go to the sessions. We've got 275 speakers from all over Canada and all over the world. When you go to these sessions, listen, learn, think, take something home with you that you will do. Commit yourself to taking something you've learned and making it happen at home. You'll also notice that Indigenous homelessness and reconciliation are front and center. Through Indigenous ceremonies and practices over the course of the conference, we're going to pay tribute not only to local Indigenous uh, peoples, but to all Indigenous peoples while respecting the differences celebrated across nations uh, and traditions. It's important that we remember that housing and homeless systems are part of the machinery of colonization and that we have an important role to uh, play in reconciliation. And as I've been you know, reminded, as non-Indigenous allies, we have to do our own homework. We have to take the initiative to learn and act on our role in the reconciliation. Please take this opportunity to inform your actions on reconciliation with the wealth of insights available to you here. There are a lot of people uh, that I have to thank over the next couple of days for making this conference possible. But I want to start by thanking Cindy Sue McCormack, Victoria Bombray, and Va uh, Yvonne Maracle for your own, for your help in bringing Indigenous history, life, and culture alive. I also want to acknowledge our uh, Indigenous cultural supporters, elders, traditional teachers, healers, wisdom and knowledge keepers, and community helpers helping all of us in our journey in reconciliation. I'm pleased to say this year that we have our largest ever contingent of people with lived experience homelessness who will enrich us with their presence. You know, at the heart of ending homelessness is knowing that all people who experience homelessness are people, people of value and potential who have rights, to have the right to housing and to live in security with peace and dignity. We're here and we all act in service of Canadians at risk of or experiencing homelessness. Please seek out the wisdom of our colleagues who have experienced homelessness. And finally, the National Conference on Ending Homelessness is a diverse, inclusive, safe space for everyone. The Alliance has made a commitment to inclusion and is working hard to make this conference that welcoming space. I ask that you also honor that commitment while you're here with us and I know that you will. I said a minute ago at the, that the end of homelessness has begun and I talked a bit about why I think that's the case, but really standing here, seeing a sellout crowd of 1,300 people from across Canada and around the world, you're, the, uh, you're all the evidence we need. You're, you are the alliance. You are the movement. You are the people who will end homelessness. So let's uh, get to work. I have, as always, we have a couple of uh, housekeeping items to, to, to mention. Uh, there has been a sacred fire, as Yvonne uh, mentioned. It was lit this morning. It will remain lit for the duration of the conference. And I encourage each of you to take a few minutes, take uh, tobacco, uh, talk to the to the fire and, and meet with the, the fire keeper. It's over at Hamilton City Hall. Go down to the first floor, out the front door, hang a left, you won't miss it. Um, concurrent sessions are happening on all three floors of the convention center. Uh, we're gonna have break stations on each floor. There's an awful lot of us here. We're going to a break now. Uh, go to your, where your session is gonna be or else you won't get coffee. Um, and we also have exhibitors on the first and third floor of the convention center. Please take a few minutes. And a final reminder, the welcome reception ho hosted by our Hamilton Host Committee is right here in this room at 5 o'clock. Thank you all very much. We'll talk to you at lunch.